Meanwhile, today is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day. It's really a time to honor babies who have passed away and also bring attention to the needs of those who have experienced pregnancy and infant loss. And this morning, we are joined by Dr. Priya Batra, a women's health psychologist at Kaiser. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for so much for putting a spotlight on this issue. It really does affect so many women and families. You know, and I think that's, that's one of the reasons to have the conversation is because a lot of times when families, when people go through this, it can feel isolating, but it's really more common than folks realize. It really is. About 25% of women will be affected by this, um, and they are not alone. Their partners are in this as well, the other children they may have. Um, there's a circle of loss around these families, and often it's the circle of silence that keeps the pain um, so potent. And it's really interesting. We have some numbers up on the screen right now. We're actually seeing the rates of SIDS deaths down 50% since the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And I mean, again, if you're looking for silver linings, technology, awareness, a lot of these conversations Prenatal have care really helped. Prenatal care essential. 100%, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, and maybe one of the reasons that folks still don't come forward as much to talk about it, there still is a stigma attached to it. There is, it's really important to uh, um, lean into the feelings of guilt and shame and recognize that there actually is no guilt and shame in this. The vast majority of the time, there was something medically going on. It's not a fault-based thing. And it's so important to talk to other women and families who have been there. Once you mention it, that you've had a miscarriage or a neonatal demise, people come out of the woodwork to share their experience mm -hmm. as well. And it can be so validating. That pain just lives in the silence. And there can be so much healing in the remembrance. Yeah, and again, that goes for the women as well as the men because oftentimes it might even just be young families or older couples who are trying later in life. Absolutely, and I think a lot of times we want to give focus to the woman where this happened in her body, but I really like to point out to couples that you both lost a child, mm -hmm. you both lost a hope and a dream, and it's important to keep this conversation going between the two of you, yeah. to make space for men to grieve as well, and to talk to children in a developmentally appropriate way about the family loss. Yeah, and, and again, there are so many ways to cope, so what are some of the recommendations? Um, to be really deliberate, and intentional about making time to grieve. That yeah. can look a lot of different ways, perhaps journaling, um, planting a tree, creating a memory box. Um, people like to display an urn with um, the remains if they have that. Um, maybe once a month meeting with family, annual remembrances. Yeah. Really important to remember anniversary dates. They can sneak up on you. Um, when the due date would have been, holidays, um, milestones of finding out certain information in the pregnancy. These can be really painful days and often it's the week prior um, that's even more tough than the actual date. Yeah, and that's where the communication aspect really comes into play for a lot of this. So if somebody, maybe, maybe they don't have somebody that they can turn to, what kind of support resources are out there right now? You know, there are some wonderful supports in our community. There's Sharing Parents. Um, people can look it up, sharingparents.org. And online, there's a wonderful resource, Postpartum Support International. There's wonderful groups for women who have, uh, and couples who have experienced pregnancy loss and neonatal loss. Dr. Batra, thank you so much for your time this morning. Really appreciate it. A very important message to get out there. Thanks so much.